Welcome to Retro Arcade Reviews. My name is John, and in this episode, we will be reviewing the arcade classic, Bust the Move. Originally titled Puzzle Bobble in Japan, Bust a Move is a puzzle game that was developed by Taito in 1994. Now, Bust a Move is one of those games in the arcades you played when there were too many experts lined up to play Street Fighter or every other game cost 50 cents or greater to play and you only have a quarter left. Bust a Move was always a quarter to play and it was a quarter well spent if you were good. So a friend of mine owned the sequel for the PlayStation and since it was the only game he had for the system, we played it like almost every day and every day he proceeded to wipe the floor with me. I even borrowed the game for a couple of weeks just to get better and ended up still losing. Badly. I couldn't figure it out until he explained it to me what he was doing, but before I get to that, let me just briefly explain the gameplay. At the start of each round, there are prearranged bubbles located at the top of the board. You have to clear all the bubbles from the board before it hits the bottom line. Bubbles are removed by forming three or more of the same color bubbles. Now, why my friend was beating me was that when you remove a large group of hanging bubbles, let's say four or more, some of them will be transferred to your opponent. So he was like making these crazy groups all connected to two identical bubbles. So when the color came up, he got rid of the two identical bubbles connected to the huge group. That huge group will form releasing a flurry of bubbles on my side. Kind of like Tetris and Puzzle Potter. Now, it may seem like common sense after I explained it, but when I first started playing, I wasn't thinking about that at all. I just figured if you clear as many bubbles as fast as you can, then that's it. The same system can be applied in single player mode. Basically, dropping a group of bubbles will result in compounded points. For example, if you drop one bubble, it's worth 20 points, 2, 40, 380, and so on and so forth. So you can get like a monstrous amount of points dropping groups of bubbles rather than just like eliminating them right away. Now, for a little backstory on this game, Taito wasn't really expecting much from the game. It actually was only meant to be a puzzle parody of Bubble Bobble, and that's it. It was created on Taito's B-System hardware and was sold to SNK to be used on their Neo Geo MBS hardware six months later for the international release. However, much to Taito's surprise, the game did incredibly well in the arcades, leading Taito to create Puzzle Bobble 2, 3, and 4 on their F3 system hardware. You see, at the time, there were like crazy fighting games coming out and they were just getting more and more complicated to play. I mean, the fighting games actually started to feel a bit esoteric in a way, and I don't know if that's the right word to be used in this context, but it's actually how I felt about the whole situation. And due to the popularity of the genre, it was like the only games you saw in the arcades. So games like Bust a Move and Puzzle Fighter offered hope to the casual gamer who couldn't pull off like a 5,000 hit combo on Killer Instinct and who also didn't want to refer to playing dated games like Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, Galaga, etc, etc. Fun fact, the game was originally going to be named Bubble Buster before Taito settled on a name Puzzle Bobble. The Bubble Buster title screen is hidden within the game itself. The name Bust a Move was only used for the North American release. In 1998, Enix, before it became Square Enix, released the game by the name of Bust a Move dance and rhythm action. 989 Studios, the company responsible for bringing the game stateside, had to change the name for the North American release to Buster Move to avoid conflict with Buster Move which was already out in the arcades. Buster Move was ported over to the Wonder Swan, Neo Geo Pocket, Game Gear, Game Boy Advance, SNES, 3DO, and the PC. Like a number of other popular puzzle titles, Buster Move has its fair share of clones and knockoffs as well. Because of the game's simplicity as well as its fun and addicting nature, Buster Move was able to thrive during the heyday of the 2D fight revolution, which is saying a lot about the game because other genres and games during this period of arcade history were pretty much overlooked and ignored. Buster Move would not only remain steadfast during this period, but garnered enough attention to spawn a few more sequels, and I say, play this game and let me know what you think. <laughs> 